guys, so for this first project, I went to the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna show you all the things I bought for the Dollar Tree. I, starting with this oval platter, I got it in the party section. You wanna make sure that you remove all of the stickers if you can. If they're a little too tough, then you can always just spray it with water and then it should come out pretty easy. I also picked up these little round sponge brushes. This was in like the kids arts and crafts section. I also picked up the larger sponge brushes. This was in the hardware section. And I do believe that they sell joint compound at the dollar store, probably in smaller containers. But I went ahead and bought this one at Lowe's only because I have other projects and I needed a larger um, bucket. So um, if they do not have joint compound at your Dollar Tree dollar store, you can always go to your local hardware store, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, or even Home Depot and make sure you get the joint compound. The reason we are using joint compound for this is because we're going to create texture and to mimic that stone, um, to mimic that stone look, we are going to use this because it's going to dry hard, it's going to have cracks, and it's going to be bumpy, and that is exactly what we want for this platter. I am doing an inspiration of the Restoration Hardware Oval Bowl Tray, and um, I really fell in love with it. I almost purchased it, but I figured this would be a good opportunity to go to the Dollar Tree and try to recreate something. So this is not a dupe by any means. This is an inspired look because obviously this shape is not exactly like theirs, but if you have one that looks like theirs, then even better. But I am just being inspired and trying to recreate something for you guys. If maybe you're a college student, maybe you're on a budget and you just really love that high-end look, or maybe you just wanna be a little bit crafty because you're stuck at home bored. Um, this is just a nice opportunity to get some inexpensive um, items and be creative. So let's get started. I have no format. I am basically going by my artistic sort of flow here. So I have no format or direction. I am just going to wing this. I don't think it's going to be fairly hard. I am going to take some of the compound with my brush and I'm going to just smear it. I'm going to get something to set the bowl on top and I'm going to aim to get the bottom of it. Once that dries, then that's when the magic happens. I also forgot to mention I do have some acrylic paints here. You get paints that replicate some kind of like an old vessel. So lots of browns, beiges, you want a little bit of green. Um, and that's what I have here. I have the Dunkler Ocker. It's a weird name. Dunkler Ocker is the name of this brown. I have mint and I have beige. And I'm also gonna bring out a little bit of black because I wanna do some like little old veining through the dish. Um, but other than that, acrylic paints also are found at the um, Dollar Tree. There was some colors there. They didn't have all the colors, but I already happen to have these. And so I'm just gonna work with what I have. But by all means, you can get all these supplies at the Dollar Tree. Not to mention some paper plates um, to add your colors and to set your brushes on because it's gonna get a little messy. All right, guys, so let's get started with this project. All right, guys, so I opened up my compound. Roll up your sleeves, make sure that you have your surface um, well protected. I don't have gloves, but if it bothers you, by all means, you can wear gloves. It's probably gonna be a lot easier to clean up, to be honest with you. I have these, but I'm not even sure because I know this stuff is super thick and goopy, how this is going to help. I may just go for it with my hands. I'm gonna take off my wedding rings. Um, I may just go for it with my hands and just go to town. So let me see, <laughs> let me dig this right in. Yeah, no, this is eh, not that bad. All right, so I'm gonna start just coating, kind of like you're buttering a cake or something. I'm just gonna go for it. Um, there's no rhyme or reason. Just get the product on first, and then we're gonna we're gonna worry about texture in a little bit and create those cool little grooves and pits. And I would say that you want a fairly thick consistency. You do not want to leave it too thin. Um, we definitely want to create and mimic a stone-like pattern, stone-like texture. So I may just, let me 
just do my hands, but this is helping a little bit. All right, just gonna go all the way around. This is gonna take some time to dry because it's, it is thick, but not as, not as long as it would if it was paper mache. So I'm gonna keep going until I feel my consistency is where I want it to be, and then I'm going to flip it over. All right, you guys, so what I have decided to do, because this is really, really wet and not easy to create texture just yet, so I'm going to let it dry partial way. Um, I actually took out my blow dryer and I'm going to, for the sake of the video, speed it up a little bit. So you may want to kind of watch your project so you can step away, maybe eat some lunch and come back. It does dry relatively quick as my hands are already getting really kind of stone hard um, but don't worry it rinses off really easily and so what I want to do is give it about 20 minutes and come back to it and then I'm going to use some tools to create some nice texture and then I'm going to flip it upside down and work the underside I've literally dried it for about five minutes with the hair dryer. And you wanna do a finger test and see that you can make an impression and it's not gonna be completely going all the way in. You wanna do just very light taps and you could already start seeing little pits. That's usually a good sign that it's already curing, but you don't want it completely dry because then you may not be able to put your um, pits and little marks in there. So I'm gonna maybe dry for another two or three minutes and um, I'll have a lot more control with the distressings. Okay, so it's drying and so I gave it two more minutes with the hair dryer. You can let it naturally dry. I'm trying to rush this, but what naturally happens if you have a thin layer on the plastic is that it's going to start separating and cracking, which that is the kind of look I'm going for to begin with. Um, this probably will need some type of a top coat to lock it all in there. Um, bear in mind, we're using the joint compound, which is a heavy material on a very shiny plastic. So it may fall apart. I'm not sure. I, this is my first time doing this. Um, I still have high expectations that this may turn out really, really well. Again, this is a decorative piece, so it's not like we're going to eat off of it. Please do not do that. Um, I took out this spoolie art um, little tool and I have also just kind of tapped my fingers inside, if you guys can see that. And I'm just creating like little pits with my fingers and then just taking the little brush and just again making little pits. We want it to look aged and old, but the aging is going to happen when we start getting into the painting. Right now we just want to create that really cool texture. Um, there's certain parts where it was a little bit thicker, so that might need some more time to dry, but it is dried enough so that we can create our texture. Um, so I'm really happy so far with how it's looking. Again, keep this random. You don't want uniform uh, kind of lines. And feel free to use any other tools that you find that may work for this. So I have this tool that you guys remember from my other video where I was doing some plaster art and I was dragging. I may just kind of do some lines in there. You just want irregularity. So if you can make it as irregular as possible, it looks very realistic. Guys, you're gonna have to take time working on one side um, otherwise when you set this over you're going to mess up your pattern so this will have to dry for a few hours before you can um, flip it up I'm just going to use the joint compound 
and just rest it upside down and do the same thing, repeat step one on the other side. And then once that's all dry, then we're ready for paint. All right, guys, so it is dry. I'm loving the texture that is underneath. So I went ahead, I had a second container and I'm just using it underneath to lift this up so that I can work. I'm honestly just gonna go with my hands as if you can see my hands are already covered. It's non-toxic and it will not ruin your skin. But if you have sensitive skin, by all means use gloves. I'm just gonna grab a good amount of it and just kind of massage it all the way through. Again, just repeating the first step. Now with this one, I'm actually not gonna go as thick. Um, I just wanna create some texture so it's almost like like i'm painting the bowl um there's some ridges here that are kind of hard so do the best that you can with what you're working with and then i'm also going to take the blow dryer and dry it up so i'll be right back all right so i wanted to show you in case i forgot to mention it that i'm making the little pit marks with my fingers and then as it's drying, I am also, um, it, the, the product is also balling up, um, which I like because it's creating all that really nice texture. So this is why we wait intervals um, so that it can kind of dry a little bit and then we can create those little uh, marks here. And then what I'm doing, I'm also, because I don't want jagged little edges, I'm also just kind of like pressing it in to create somewhat smoothness around the bowl um, and again guys because of the particular bowl that I have it has really razor thin edges so this is almost impossible to cover but nothing like a good paint job that will kind of tie it all in so I always say the projects look somewhat very ugly before they start to look beautiful so hang in there don't give up on your project just keep going and yeah, so this is this is the format. And now I'm just gonna let this dry and then we're gonna go straight to paint. Okay, you guys, so here is my bowl. Let me just back out a little bit. Um, it's kind of hard to see because it's really um, bright and it's white, but do you see these edges that are really hard to get because it's so thin? That's okay because that's gonna look really cool and authentic when we paint. Basically, we just age this bowl and we gave it that nice stone appearance. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely in love with this texture. If you um, don't like as much texture, then you may want to opt for a different product. Um, this is what I chose. I'm sure there's other ways you guys can do this as well. You can use a vinyl product. You can use something that is not as slippery and shiny like the bowl I have here. But nonetheless, this is the project I've chosen and the format I've chosen. So we're gonna go ahead and go outside and paint this. I'm going to lock this in with a quick spray of, um, I think I'm gonna do white, white spray paint. That's gonna help to kind of pull it together and give me a little bit more sting. All right, I'm choosing to do the, sorry, my neighbors are playing in their pool. So if you hear some background noise. I'm choosing to use the Krylon in the matte sand dollar color. Um, this is just a really nice beige. And I'm gonna just get this side, I'm gonna let it dry and flip it over and do the other side. All right guys, so here it's still drying. This is very wet, but this is the, um, the spray painted bowl. Um, it doesn't look that great yet but I'm going to add some dimension with the acrylic paints but I wanted to show you just the first layer I really like the overall texture of this I think it looks super cool very stone like very ancient and that's what I'm going for All right, you guys um, I'm aiming the camera more for the bowl so you can see what I'm doing I'm gonna be using these dollar store little sponge stamps and I'm going to put some acrylic paint in here. Now that this is dry, it has a lot of texture, probably a little bit too much than what I would want, but nonetheless, it still looks great. It looks really old and ancient. And I'm going to um, dab the three colors I purchased 
onto my plate. I have the beige, I have a little bit of the green to give it that patina look. And I'm gonna do a little bit of the dark brown. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of the black. And then we'll get started. So I'm gonna start with the, let's see here. Start here with the brown, the darker brown. Literally going to just stamp it in random sections. Be careful not to put too much pressure. You don't want to lift your, um, you don't want to lift your compound. I'm gonna just work on the inside and again, we're gonna have to flip the bowl over and um, do the other side. All right, you guys, so I'm not gonna put too much more um, work into this. I am going to confess there was a small chunk that lifted and I actually threw some black in there so that it looks really aged. You cannot even tell that anything's missing. Um, it just looks really worn, like something that came out of Jesus's days. <laughs> um, not sure if I intended it to look this old, but nonetheless, this was a fun project and yeah.